steering wheel? Because we talked about this. Now, the one thing I'm really stressing to you guys, so if you forgot it or you didn't write it down, write it down again. All complex zeros have including their conjugate. So if I'm saying, hey, write the equation of the polynomial, and I say, hey, here's one zero. Do you remember when we did that first problem? Remember you said, like, how do you know what two? How do you know two is a zero, right? And that because it's difficult. If you have a polynomial that's to the fourth power and you only know one zero, you know there's three other zeros that are out there, right? So knowing another zero will be very beneficial. So the nice thing about complex zeros is if you have one, you know you have the conjugate pair. So the conjugate pair in this example is going to be x plus 2i. All right. Now, one thing I'm looking for in your homework is making sure you guys are doing these types of problems. It's really not more difficult, but it does just kind of carry a little bit of extra steps. Yes? So the complex zero is if you have a complex zero, you have a Always. Same thing with irrational zeros. If you have the square root of 3, you have negative square root of 3. If you have 5 minus the square root of 3, you have 5 plus square root of 3. As long as it's imaginary or irrational. Because imaginary and irrational come from the square root, plus or minus, right? Do you have a question? OK. So now we just do the same thing we did before. Right? Set both of your zeros equal to x. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I do? What the heck is a zero? Did I write those down? What the heck? I didn't even write down the problem. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I copied down the wrong. I was looking at the wrong problem. Well, you wouldn't have any x's because then you'd have too many variables. Sorry. I apologize. I wrote down. I was looking at the wrong problem. So now we set them equal to 0. So we subtract 1 plus 2i. Subtract 1 plus 2i. Subtract 1, subtract 2i. Right. They're set equal to x. So now we're going to set them equal to 0. So we're going to get them all on the same side. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. OK. So I have x minus 1 plus 2i equals 0 x minus 1 minus 2i equals 0. And remember, when you have two factors set equal to 0, you can multiply them equal 0. It's like the reverse, the reverse um, zero product property. So now you're kind of working backwards, right? It's just, doing fi it's just factoring to find the zeros backwards. Yeah. Uh, I'm just doing all this backwards, yes. Yes. <laughs> this is not. This isn't what your old homework is. You know. You know. You should know from now. Your homework is like every problem is something totally different. So that's why it's important to not understand just what I'm doing here and try to replicate. You got to understand the process and the thinking that I'm trying to convey to you, so that you can start applying that to the different types of problems you're going to see in your homework. So as I mentioned, it's a different type of thinking we got to transform to. So here's your zeros. Your zeros are basically, remember guys, the same thing. If I said 2 is a 0, what is the factored form? x minus, x minus 2. I'm doing the same thing. It's just I'm doing it with, it just looks a lot crazier. But it's the same thing. If 2 is the 0, that's my factor. If this is my 0, that's my factor. It's the same thing. It's just with these crazy multiple numbers. Okay. Now, the other thing I want you guys to understand is you can group the first two terms. And the reason why I want to group the first two terms is because you guys have been going over this and over this and over this. And I know it just needs to click eventually that the difference of two squares, when you have a square term minus another square term, the factored form is a minus b times a plus b. And the reason why that's important for you guys to understand the difference of two squares, because I can kind of relate the difference of two squares to this example. Do you guys agree that? Do you guys agree that x minus 1 and x minus 1 is kind of like the a? Yeah. And 2i and then and 2i is kind of like the b? Yeah. And then it's plus and then it's minus? So in reality, to write that, I can just do it's a squared minus b squared. So therefore, it's x minus 1 squared minus 2i squared. 
squared. Just remember what a and b is. It's plus and minus. We're going to, I haven't simplified it yet. a squared minus b squared. Yeah, because it's plus or minus. You're just thinking that's b and that's b. And it's b and b, but it's minus and plus. Okay. Now, again, we're not really setting this equal to x. We don't want this set equal to 0. We're trying to write the polynomial. So that's going to be f of x. The next mistake that a lot of students have trouble with is remembering what binomial squares are. If you have a binomial squared, that is x minus 1 times x minus 1. So when you apply FOIL, that's x squared minus x minus x plus 1 x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, So I'm going to do this in my head. So if you don't follow me, use go back to remember FOIL. Yes? I have a question. It's kind of back a few steps. Where it says x minus 1 plus 2i is 0. Where did you get the x minus 1 from there? Because I just solved for these. I just put them all on the same side. I subtracted 1 on both sides. I added a 2i on both sides. Subtracted 1 on both sides, subtracted the 2i on both sides. So when doing that, it got to 0. And then it's x minus 1 minus 2i. x minus 1 plus 2i equals 0. You're just getting them on the same side. x equals 1 minus 2i. They're not on the same side. x is on the left side. This is on the right side. You've got to get them on the same side so they're equal to 0. So now, so now let's multiply x minus 1 out. Well, x minus 1 times x minus 1 is going to equal x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then 2i squared, 2i times 2i is going to be 4i squared. Now, hopefully, you guys remember that also, if i equals the square root of negative 1, and, we, and if we square both sides, then i squared is negative 1. So again, I'll do it again. 2i squared is 2i times 2i. 2 times 2 is 4. i times i is i squared. i, I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So it's minus a negative 4. However, minus a negative 4 is positive 4. Positive 4 plus 1 is 5. So 